Here's how you can make a simple and delicious pound cake. Combine three room temperature eggs with three tablespoons of milk, also at room temperature, and one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Once that's mixed together well, set it aside and in a separate bowl add one and a quarter cups of all-purpose or plain flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, and a teaspoon of lemon zest. Once that's combined, add about one cup of unsalted butter at room temperature cut into cubes. Now the easiest way to combine this is to just use your hands to press the butter into the flour. Once a kind of dough is formed, add the wet ingredients gradually about one third at a time. After it's all mixed together, you should have a light and fluffy batter. Pour this into a loaf pan that's been greased and lined with parchment paper. Give it a shake and then bake in a preheated 350 degree oven for 55 minutes. Allow it to cool completely, then dust the top with powdered sugar and slice into servings. Stop what you're doing and go make these strawberry shortcake pops. Add about half a pound cake to a food processor and blend into a fine crumb. Next, add roughly three quarters of a cup of vanilla frosting to the cake crumbs. Mix this together, adding more frosting if you need until it has a texture similar to Play-Doh. Next, add some diced strawberries and mix those in as well. Now you should be able to take about two tablespoons of the mixture and form them into balls. Just do this by rolling them around in your hands and then transfer to a lined baking sheet. Place a popsicle or lollipop stick about halfway into each ball. Lollipop sticks look nicer, but popsicle sticks work just fine. Now freeze these for one to two hours until solid. Once frozen, you can dip the cake pops into melted white chocolate. Tap off the excess and then place back on the cookie sheet. Return these to the freezer to set, and in the meantime, add a couple drops of red food coloring to the leftover white chocolate. This is optional and it's just for decoration. Transfer to a piping bag, then drizzle the chocolate on both sides of the cake pops. Allow to set and then serve. Got to try this spiced dark chocolate banana cake. First sift all-purpose flour, cocoa powder, baking soda, salt, cinnamon, ginger, cloves, nutmeg, cardamom, and allspice into a large bowl. If you don't have all these spices at home, don't worry, you can leave a few out, but I definitely recommend adding cinnamon at least. Once combined, set that aside and in a separate bowl mash 5 ripe bananas. Add melted butter and brown sugar to the bananas, then mix until combined. Next, whisk in one beaten egg, followed by about one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Now all that's left to do is combine the dry ingredients with the wet and pour in one cup of chocolate chips. Once just combined, transfer to a greased and lined loaf pan, then bake in a preheated 350 degree oven for one hour and five minutes. After it's cooled, prepare a ganache topping by gradually heating heavy cream and dark chocolate chips in the microwave in 10 to 15 second intervals until melted. Pour the ganache over the cake, then allow to set and serve. You know we love to recreate Gordon Ramsay's recipes, and this mozzarella rosemary pizza looked too good not to try. The first step is to combine two 7 gram packets of active dry yeast with 325 milliliters of warm water plus one tablespoon of sugar to feed the yeast. Give that a mix, then allow it to sit for a few minutes. You should see lots of bubbles start to form. If you don't, your yeast is dead, and I'd like to extend my deepest condolences. Sift 500 grams or 4 cups of double zero or pizza flour into a large bowl. Add about 1 tablespoon of fine sea salt, and gently mix with your hands, making a well in the middle. Pour 4 tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil into that well, followed by the bubbly yeast mixture. Now get your hands in there to mix the ingredients together until a ball of dough forms. At this point, remove the dough from the bowl and knead for about 10 minutes on a lightly floured surface. Place in a lightly floured bowl, cover, and allow to rise for about 1 hour or until it has roughly doubled in size. Gently punch down the dough to release the air. Remove the dough from the bowl and divide into 4 roughly even portions. Then on a lightly floured surface, gently press the portion into a circle roughly 25 centimeters or 10 inches in diameter. Transfer the dough to a lightly oiled, oven-safe pan over medium heat. After a few minutes on the heat, you'll notice the dough will start to puff up. At this point, add about 2 tablespoons of tomato passata, also known as tomato puree, then tear on about half a ball of fresh mozzarella cheese. Finally, drizzle on a little more olive oil, then place under the broiler in your oven for about 4 minutes or until the cheese is bubbling and the crust is nice and crispy. Once done, add freshly cracked black pepper and some fresh rosemary leaves, then serve immediately. We'd love to know how we did on this, so please tag Gordon Ramsay so he can let us know. It's clear that nearly every country has its own version of this dessert, and we can't wait to try them all. This one comes from Down Under and is known as Hedgehog Slice. Start by breaking up your biscuits. You can use any mild, crunchy vanilla flavored biscuit for this. Next, add chopped walnuts or any other kind of nut and desiccated coconut. Set that aside and add about 6 tablespoons of unsalted butter to a pot, followed by 1 can of sweetened condensed milk. To make it chocolatey, add about 3 tablespoons of cocoa powder as well as dark chocolate chips. Turn the heat to medium and stir until the chocolate has melted and everything is well combined. 
This will take a couple minutes of stirring. Pour the chocolate mixture over the biscuits and stir until everything is coated. You can now transfer to a greased and lined square baking dish and use a spatula to spread it out and press flat. This now needs to chill in the fridge for about 30 minutes until set. Once the dessert is nearly set, melt semi-sweet chocolate in the microwave in 15 to 30 second intervals. Once mostly melted, pour in two teaspoons of coconut oil and stir to combine. Pour the chocolate topping over the chilled hedgehog slice, then use a spatula to spread it out evenly. Finally, return to the fridge for one to two hours, then slice into squares and enjoy. Which country's version should we try next? Without frosting, a cupcake is just a muffin. Am I wrong? Here's how you can make a chocolate buttercream frosting. First, whip your... You need to try this vegan banana bread recipe. Combine all-purpose flour, rolled oats, baking soda, baking powder, salt, cinnamon, and nutmeg in a large bowl. Once combined, set that aside and peel four ripe bananas and place them in a large bowl. Use a potato masher or a fork to mash the bananas. Then add ground flaxseed, light brown sugar, soy or any non-dairy milk, melted coconut oil, maple syrup, and vanilla extract. Mix everything together with a whisk or a wooden spoon and then pour in the dry ingredients. Once everything is well combined, you're going to have a thick batter. Transfer this to a loaf pan that's been greased and lined with parchment paper. Then you can use your spatula to spread out the batter and gently tap the pan on the counter to make sure it's even. Finally, you can optionally add chopped walnuts on top to give it a nice crunch. This now needs to bake in a preheated 350 degree oven for 45 to 55 minutes. 